can you say anything about uh, the meditative mindset that you have to develop for going into the arc or you know accessing any kind of time technology or advanced technology were, were you trained were you given instructions on on what kind of meditative mind you need to be in it comes natural because when you enter to the arc you feel like a pulsing sensation so you follow the same pulse and sensation of the, what you feel, what the arc feels with you, and you feel with the arc. You feel connected to the arc. So when you feel that vibration, you connect to it. You you measure yourself to that vibration, and you breathe different. You look at things different. Everything seems slower, so like in slow motion, but you're still doing what you're doing. You have to, it's a, a couple breathable exercises that we go through, similar to what people do in yoga. You're listening to Exopolitics Today with Dr. Michael Sala, your source for the uncensored truth regarding the human, extraterrestrial, global, and political agenda. Click the like button and subscribe to this channel. And now, here's Dr. Michael Sala. I'm very happy to have JP back on Exopolitics today, and he is going to be talking about a fourth mission to the Atlantic Space Arc. For those that may be new to the information, JP is currently serving with the U.S. Army. We can't give any more information about where he's serving and specific dates, uh, but he is active, and he has been on three previous missions to the Atlantic Space Arc. And he has described what has occurred there. So now he's recently had a fourth mission. So welcome back, JP, to Exopolitics Today. How you doing, Doc? It's a pleasure to be here to share this beautiful information. Yeah, this is really exciting. I know people want to know exactly what is going on with the space arcs and uh, that you've now returned for a fourth time there. So tell us uh, you know, what happened. Okay, we, we left from where we're at. There was a total of six of us, a mixture of military personnel, different ranks. We went to the ARC location, where the ARC location was, and we were all in civilian attire, and we had like different kind of uh, like GPS systems. We had like a different kind of, a different type of watch that they gave us. This watch, I think, measured our heartbeat, measure the way we we felt. I think it's like a motion or something that it feeds back information to the top part of of the location that we were going down to. So yeah, we grabbed a, a helicopter. We landed on the donut shaped ship it's in charge of this particular arc in the Atlantic. And we landed civilian attires there's a lot of military personnel walking up and down and working on top of this ship it's really hot uh, once you step on this ship but it's it's normal we we got a brief of what we we're going to be doing the brief said about going down to the to the ark and we were gonna get a piece of the ark and and bring that piece up because they were going to do an investigation on the properties of the ark so we got into the elevator and we were going down when we were going down the elevator stopped and we were stuck there for like an hour an hour and a half you know we were calm everything was calm we were um well, we're going down. We know that we have to be in a state of mind, a meditative state of mind, because we're entering like a different, not a realm, but a different energy. So we're already trained to enter like in a different state of mind when you enter these these arcs, you know. Maybe the same way an archaeologist, when they enter a place for the first time, like a pyramid or something, you know, you have that state of mind that you're there to learn. And you're there to get information. So the location of this this type of rock or this type of 
this type of thing that's connected to the arc was on the back part, the the south side, left part of the arc. Uh, it, it takes you maybe 40 minutes by going through the chambers to go to that particular part. That particular part haven't been, uh, people haven't gone there yet, so we didn't know what to expect. Can you say anything about the chambers that you walked through to get to that end of the arc? You, you said it was it was at one part of the arc, this location where you had to gather material, seek, gather material. So you walked through chambers. What did you see in the chambers? Um, you see different statues. You see different writings of past civilizations that has been through the arcs. You see different type of doors. They, they open by different sound frequencies that we have. There's a guy that he specialized on, on sound frequency, but also some of us have uh, a certain type of DNA that activates certain parts of the arc. And that, that is quite interesting that when you go through these arcs, they light up and these doors, they just move up or move to the side and they you keep going to the through these chambers. So if someone were to go on one of these arcs, it would be like the interior of a submarine. You've got different compartments and th there's doorways between the different compartments and either there's a sound um, machine or frequency machine that gets the doors to open or someone has the right DNA and the door opens. So this is, so you have to, you have to do it that way. That's the only way to get through the different sections of the arcs that are filled as you said, with remnants of ancient peoples that were there for a period of time. Mm, yeah. And while we're going through these arcs, you got to be in a meditative state of mind. You can't be overwhelmed of what you say. The reason we have the watch is measuring our heart rate and measuring the feeling that we're feeling. Uh, so the arc feels you. It's a different type of time when you enter to these arcs. Time is not the same. Time is a construct of human beings um, in some parts of the arcs. You know, the writings it says, uh, time does not exist. Time is, um, everything is connected. Like, Earth follows time by the rotation of the moon that goes around the, you know, the Earth and all that. So time is different in different places. Like, for example, in Mars, what, there's 687 days it takes Mars to go around our sun. So uh, that makes it 56 days, um, makes it worth a month, like if it was Earth. So time is different everywhere you go. In space, astronauts follow a 24 hour time frame. what NASA, the, the location of NASA, not the location of space. So when you're in space, also time is different in space. So time does not exist on these arcs. And I assume and I know that time does not exist also these UFOs, UAPs that you see flying around. Time is not the same. That's why when we see these um, UFOs making these sharp turns and these fast mode that they go on, we can't explain why they do that because time is different for them. And what we perceive what time is, is, is totally, it's, 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 it's crazy. Um, when you when you wrap your head around it. Can you say anything about uh, the meditative mindset that you have to develop for going into the arc or, you know, accessing any kind of time technology or advanced technology? Were, were you trained? Were you given instructions on, on what kind of meditative mind you need to be in? Is it like it going into nature and just feeling calm and peaceful it but connected? It comes natural because when you enter to the arc, you feel like a pulsing sensation. So you follow the same pulsing sensation of the, what you feel, what the arc feels with you, and you feel with the arc. You feel connected to the arc. So when you feel that vibration, you connect to it. You you measure yourself to that vibration, and you breathe different. You look at things different. Everything seems slower, like in slow motion, but you're still doing what you're doing. 
you have to. There is a, a couple breathable exercises that we go through, similar to what people do in yoga. When you're on the arc, you said there was a beat. Can you describe that beat? What's it like? Or, or a frequency? It's like a, it's like a hum, it's like a like a booming hum, similar to like a what what a heartbeat would would sound like, but without the second part of the heartbeat. You know, boom boom. But it's just a boom. Boom. You hear everything. Everything is vibrating at the same time. OK, so kind of like a heartbeat, but everything is humming as well. Yeah, every, everything feels alive. The walls, they feel alive. Everything okay. feels like if, if it was a, a, a big organism. OK, I just wanted to play something for you just to see if it if it's any in any way similar to that. This is uh, I just wanted to play something it was just we'll, we'll let it play for 10 seconds and you just tell me what you know whether that's in any way similar so okay starting from now it's it's um yeah it's similar to that but it's slower okay well, that's interesting because what I just played was a binaural beat for gamma brainwaves at 70 hertz. I've got similar things for like 60 hertz and 50 hertz. So mm -hmm. it, that's interesting. So it sounds like uh, the it, yeah, art yeah. Of your this. pineal gland it affects your pineal gland. Yeah, the concentration part of the pineal gland. Yeah, I think I talked about that in certain of my missions when the Aztec Mexicans they were entering the arc everything was slowing down and they felt that same vibration. That's why they started singing Akuria Mate because they felt that same vibration and they felt a happiness that they knew that they were in a special place. So when you enter to these arcs, you feel like you're in a special place, overwhelming place that you feel happy and that you feel connected to. So it's, it's really interesting. So we passed that um, chamber where that water stays still and stationary, and there is these beautiful fishes in there that were fluorescent. You could probably um, share a picture of that if you find it on this interview. We passed that chamber. It's the same fishes. We passed it, and we passed through that chamber through another type of door, and we entered to this room, Doc. And when we entered to this room, there was a stand up statue and this statue looked Indian like and Buddha like and they had a staff holding a staff to this statue it was barefooted it had a robe and this statue was silver in color and gold in color and it had a third eye and it had a, a third eye in the statue and we looked at it and the eyes were made of pearls that when you look at it, it, it not hypnotizes you, but it, it sees through you. Like, I don't know, like it's a different sensation. So it's a statue with a third eye. We went around. One of the guys that was there with us, he was an ex Marine. He went to this spot and he put his hand down on, on, this particular device of the ark, and then a piece of rock mixed in with jewels came out. And he said, this is the rock we need to bring up. And I told the guy, I said, oh, wait, if this is part of the ark, why we're bringing it up there? And he says, to activate other things around the world. And I told him, I don't want to be part of this because Whatever is in the ark, we need to leave in the ark. We can't just take the ark apart and start activating different things. He says, he told me in order to activate certain parts and certain temples around the world, we need to bring this jewel with us. And I'm like, man, I, I just wish we couldn't like touch these things and just leave it where it is because it's part of the ark. He says, it doesn't matter where this jewel is, it's always going to be part of the arc. The arc feels it. So it's like 
an extension of the ark. So he was explaining that this type of rock jewel that were taken, it still it, it still felt the ark because it was connected with the ark. So it was it's an extension to activate different things on different arcs. So this arc in the Pacific is really important because it activates other things around the world with a certain device. So that reminded me of what the ant king gave us. You know, it's that seed that can activate different things and help you with health, long, longevity. So we took it, we put it on this metal capsule. I felt, I felt like a sense of crying when I, when you, when you handle these, like happiness and crying, you mm -hmm. feel, you feel like a vibration, like sadness of what the world, what the world was feeling. So when you, when you touch this thing, you feel like, you feel like crying. Even talking about it now, you feel like crying. And it, it is all the negative that is happening around the earth. I think it captures everything. And I don't think it uses it as energy, but it just captures, it tries to capture any negative thing that tries to enter to the arc. Or it's around the arc. So we grabbed it. Everybody started getting sad and crying. And we were holding this jewel. And a lot of people in history try to get this particular rock, this particular jewel. A lot of people in history try to get this particular jewel. And we, that's what the uh, military around the world is trying to protect, this type of jewel. So I think they decided, the higher ups, they decided to bring it up because a lot of people from different nations, not States are trying to go down and try to get this type of tool out of the you know, arc. Do you know what it's made of? What kind of crystal? What the, was it transparent? Was it cloudy? Was it metallic looking? It was purple, black, and strings of white. But the strings of white was fluorescent and light up. It's beautiful. When you look at it, you're like, whoa. So it's like black jewel that you can see through, uh, like a purplish jewel that you can see through it. But and then you got white lines that are fluorescent that makes the jewel glow and look beautiful. So it's like a, it looks like a big, not egg, but like a diamond, but backwards and forward. And it has that, it has the lines of lights that you can see it and it makes you feel sad and it makes you feel like happy at the same time but it makes you feel what the earth is feeling like the sadness so a couple of us couldn't control ourselves and we, we just started bawling and crying like like babies handling th this jewel and so you think it's connected to the uh, to the earth's frequency like gaia like the some people talk about gaia as a spirit so this crystal is somehow resonating with the spirit of Gaia and you can feel the planet's emotions. And of course, yeah. all right. Wow, so that's we, amazing. We, we took it and we started traveling back. And when we brought this jewel through the, through the chamber where the, where the fishes were, the fishes stood still and started following the jewel. They stopped swimming in the in the ball of water and they just respected this type of jewel. And they just looked at it. And we were like astonished. We were like so we felt so good like holding this jewel. Like if it was something special. So we we take it, we bring it back, we go to the elevator, and we start going up the elevator. And when we get there. I don't know how much time it went by, but it was night. So we knew that time went different. A couple of hours have passed or something. But and then they told us we were down there for two days in the ark. And it felt like two or three hours. Was there any kind of protective technology around this jewel? Because it sounds like it performed a very important function for the ark, connecting it somehow with the planet's spirit or energy matrix was well, there any protective mechanism 
Well, they, they put it in this capsule. Like a metal capsule. But it had like a glass, like bulletproof glass. It's quite right. heavy. It was interesting. It was a capsule that was like this. And you put the jewel in there. And it's protected. But you can still feel the you can feel feel the energy of it. So that was interesting. They when we went up there, it was night, and there was other ships in the distance that were talking with each other with lights, like um, Morse code, talking each other with lights, talking to each other, and there were ships from different nations. I don't I don't know what nations were there, but there was probably. 15 different ships surrounding the donut shape ship that we were in. And they were just communicating back and I was saying, hey, what's going on? I says, we don't know. Um, we got other countries here. They didn't want to tell me what other countries were there. They had helicopters going left to right, communicating with each other. We had jets flying up and down. And we, when we handed over, there, there was people that looked different. Um, they were taller. They took it to this room, and we, we felt like we had to protect this jewel and see who the hell is going to receive this jewel because we didn't want nothing to happen to it. So we went into this room, and there was people dressed in, like, suits, as like suits. And they took the jewel. They put it on this gold platter, and the jewel just stood up by itself. Similar to that earth magnetic thing that that floats like that with magnetics it is it did something like that it started floating up so these people in hazmat they're a little bit taller than us i me personally i didn't feel that they were human possibly nordic they're, i think they were nordic because that's all their face they had reddish lips but they had a white pale face they had blue eyes but they had hazmat suits. Uh, we did not have hazmat suits. I don't know why they had hazmat suits. I don't know. So they took us out from the room and then they took us to another room with a couple of scientists asking us what did they, we felt when we were carrying. We told them everything. Hey, we felt sad. We felt an energy. We felt, you know, so we were just saying what was happening in the art and then they asked do you remember anything else you know how long you were there and that's when they told us that we were there like for two days and we do not remember being there more than two days we didn't feel tired we didn't feel nothing and they said yeah you guys were down there for two days so what happened we lost communication with you guys and and it felt like we talked to them like half an hour to a half an hour but then saying that, that we lost connection for two days so in between, I don't know what happened to us. I think something special happened to us six. I think some somebody from those six, they're going to come out soon to the public. So I'm, I'm excited about that. Can you sh share when this visit to the Atlantic Space Arc happened? Was it like around the July 4 weekend? Was it before that, after that? It, it was in June. It was like before that mission. Then we went to that place where the time was different. Remember, I told you that there was a mission before. So it was somewhere around June, middle of June. OK, uh, that time travel mission. Let's see, I think. OK, OK, so that was on June 23rd that you went on that time travel mission. So so this happened after that, just a few days after that. Is that right? Before that. Before that. I remember I told you that we had a mission to the ARC that I was waiting for the green light to tell you. Okay. So on I, June have, I haven't got the, the green light for this mission to tell you, but I just felt like telling you because it was a beautiful experience. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll probably get in trouble by telling you. And well, I mean, yeah, they're, they're telling me not to talk, you know. They're, they're really getting on to me not to talk no more. Yes, so, so now you've been telling me that 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 you've been pressured. You've been getting, getting some pressure. So feel free to share anything you want about that. Yeah, it's just you know when things starts getting close, when the truth start getting revealed to everybody, you know they they want to stop it. So 
I remember you telling me about the time travel mission that you, you got a bit of blowback for that, uh, releasing that information. Yeah, yeah. They, they didn't want that to come out. But, you know, I, I got the green light to say certain stuff about it, so I did, you know. And the studies are out there, man. All the all, all this stuff is true. Just people got to, you know, do more research about it. You know, just study the life of Tesla, you know. Uh, what is the atomic bomb? And and people will get close to what is um, time travel or a construct of where you were at in a certain time or in a certain location. Yeah, it, it's it's tough, Doc, you know, talking about all this and being followed and getting threatened, you know, with your life. So I just want to kind of recapitulate here that over the years in working with you, I've found that there was always a faction that was opposed to you revealing anything that was opposed to you re releasing photos or videos or talking too much about this. And, and that's been a constant, but after you joined the military, it seemed to kind of stop for a while, but now it's picking up because you're, you're talking again, revealing missions and this faction that wants you to kind of like go quiet, uh, they, I guess, concerned over the pace that information is now coming out. Yeah, you know, and also to people for, to understand, you know, we've been talking about this for a long time, for a couple of years already, and now all these whistleblowers are coming out. You know, I'm really happy that's happening, but that's just triggering, that, that, that is triggering the bad fashion people, you know to oh wow oh oh look at the news oh wow you know all this is happening and now um yeah with the book out and a lot of people knowing about what's happening I, i've been threatened a lot so <laughs> but you know i have people protecting me i believe that i believe a lot of people is protecting me protecting you protecting every other person that it's giving information because good will perel and evil will be no more so we have to understand that and we have to share love and we have to share who we are you know and and, and you know if, if people do go away you know just keep sharing love keep sharing positivity all this is going to come out regardless if they want it or not it, it's the right thing to do you know i know some things can't come out and I know a lot of people are probably going to give me shit about this or crap, but there's some things that can't come out yet because it could be harmful to everybody. You know, depending who, who uses what, what technology uses what. So I understand some parts of that, but there's things that people just need to know. What you see is not what is really there. You know, it's a construct. And when people realize that and a lot of people are opening their eyes now doc and a lot of people are knowing what's really happening you know well i want to thank you for for your courage in continuing to put out this information and that's even despite the the kind of pressures that you've been uh, facing and uh, we don't want to go too much into those details, but you are facing consequences for your actions. And uh, so, yeah, I want to thank you for, for making the sacrifice uh, because it's it's a big thing. I mean, you know, you, you've got a career, you've got a family and to keep talking about these things, it does put pressure and there's risk involved. So, yeah, I want to thank you on behalf of everyone that's listening to this. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I know sometimes we go back and forth about what we talk about, but sometimes we have to let things out, you know? So when they were briefing us about what we felt with with the jewel, a type of helicopter that I haven't seen before came and landed, and it had the propellers on top, and then the propeller twisted up and went back, and, and it, it could just jet out. So I haven't seen that vehicle before. I don't know who does it or who makes it, but I think the the jewel went onto there and, and left. And I felt the sadness leave. So I think they're gonna investigate what this jewel holds or they're gonna take it to a different place to activate something else. 
So it's probably a type of key. We were talking about it with the guys heading back home. Hey, I think that's a type of key to activate other, probably other arcs. They're going to probably put it on other arcs and activate it more. You know, I think that jewel is really important. And I think they're going to protect it the most they can. Doc, I felt peace with the people we gave it to. Um, a sense of happiness. And now my prayers is with them that have the jewel, you know. I hope they do what they need to do to activate whatever they need to activate. And I hope they'll be safe by doing it. We came back on a helicopter, civilian, civilian clothes. And after that, we went home. And everybody started calling each other. And we started getting like flashbacks in our dreams on this lost time. My flashbacks that I was giving back information. I felt like I was in a white hallway. And there was a lot of people there, different races of ETs there, and everybody was talking to each other. But it's like little flashes here and there that we were like in a big hallway, a big white hallway with a lot of different ETs talking to each other. So I don't remember as much, but that's what happened. When, and when you say you had a flashback and you remember seeing all these uh, different ETs talking to another, on another is that a flashback to uh something that happened in the arc or some some other incident well that missing time in the arc those two days that we were in there all all yep. six of us were getting we were getting flashbacks of what happened everybody was talking about the similar similar thing about being in this room or hallway white hallway with a lot of different types of ets talking to each other so that may have actually happened while you were on the space arc that there were yeah. ETs there and something happened and your, your your memory was removed it's missing time but yet you're getting flashbacks mm -hmm. fascinating okay so any final words you want to share with the audience about this mission this is your love um i always say that because this is the right thing to say you know don't have negativity in your life um, be nice, be kind to people. A lot more people are going to come out, like I keep saying, with different experiences. A lot more whistleblowers are going to come, are going to come out about different situations in the military, in the civilian sector. Now, politically outspoken figures are going to be coming out, saying that, hey, this is true, this is happening, and we, we have, just have to be ready and, and share love and accept it and open our hands for this type of disclosure because they're coming back and we just have to be ready. They're coming back. Well, thank you, JP. No problem, Doc. You have been listening to ExoPolitics today with Dr. Michael Sala. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Join or start a conversation in the comments. Take the time to explore the vast library of best-selling books, webinars, and podcasts by Dr. Sala. Visit exopoliticstoday.com.